On August 15, 2007, following your typical ribbon cutting ceremony, the gates leading to a fresh new and not so typical public green space in Spokane were officially opened. Welcome to the Moore Turner Heritage Gardens, the latest addition to the city's elaborate and highly regarded park system. What makes this new green space so special to the community of Spokane is tied not just to the garden's rich history and the fact that it's nearly 120 years old, but also to the incomprehensible notion that this historically significant garden, due to neglect and the ravages of nature, lay dormant and hidden from public awareness for most of its life, some 75 years. Ironically, in the end, it would turn out to be Mother Nature in the mid-1990s who would open the door to the garden's rediscovery and eventually lead to its complete restoration a decade later. It's truly an amazing story, and at the center of it all has been Lynn Mandyke, the director of the nearby Corbin Arts Center. I really like to attribute the ice storm that occurred in the Spokane area in 1996 for the rediscovery of the gardens. During that ice storm cleanup that occurred in 1997, that's when I had access to the site. And so the, the intrigue, the curiosity of trying to find out what was there uh, spurred me to do some research. I enlisted the help of the landscape architect at the time, Debbie Clem. What they found was that the property was originally owned by prominent local businessman, Frank Rockwood Moore. At the time that the Moore home was constructed in 1889, it was very fashionable to build a home on 7th Avenue. Kirtland Cutter built a number of homes on 7th Avenue. It was for the uh, wealthy business owners, the social elite. When the Moors purchased the property, there was a lot of basalt rock, which made a very beautiful setting for the house. And so they terraced the hillside with the basalt terraces because at that time, they basically, the hillside had been pretty much clear cut. So Mr. Moore is known for those terraces as being part of the garden. He's also attributed for the perennial garden. Unfortunately, due to Frank Rockwood Moore's untimely death at the age of 43, his family didn't get much of a chance to enjoy their new estate. In 1895, just six years after this prized property was initially purchased, it was again up for sale. A year later, it was acquired by one of the most influential and well-connected political figures of his day, U.S. Senator George Turner, or as he preferred, Judge Turner. Senator and Mrs. Turner had done a lot of entertainment. There were a lot of social gatherings at the house, and I would imagine because of the size of the garden that they used the gardens as a way to supplement their social environment. The gardens were actually redesigned in 1911 by the Turners, and they made major improvements. They hired a landscape architect out of Portland, Oregon called Hugh Bryan, and Mr. Bryan is attributed for the garden features, the rose arbor, the tea house, the pond and pergola with the waterfall. They also constructed the rose garden and a number of the trails that traversed the hillside. Over time, as the Turners moved out of the limelight and into their golden years, their shared love of gardening continued to inspire the quality and beauty of their estate garden. In 1932, this would all change, when at the age of 81, Judge Turner passed away. Unfortunately, it was during the Depression, and so Mrs. Turner was not able to pay the taxes, and so they foreclosed on the property. And the Turners relinquished the property to the mortgage company, and in January of 1940, they tore the Turner home down. And so the history and the memory of what was on this site had been lost. Lost, it was, for well over a half century, until Spokane's infamous ice storm of 96 intervened to reveal the garden's presence and allow the spirit of one of its past owners to finally be heard. When uh, Senator Turner passed away in 1932, Mrs. Turner uh, donated the scrapbooks that she'd accumulated and journals on her husband's political career to Washington State University. 
Obviously, the rediscovery of the photographs was the greatest find, and it was truly a gift. With plenty of evidence now proving the garden's existence and its historical relevance, the push to restore it was on track and moving forward. The first order of business was to organize a task force to determine the feasibility of the project as well as the level of interest within the community. This meant going public with the story. In 1999, when the uh, article appeared in Spokesman Review on the Lost Garden, a potential donor came forward who was interested in funding the project. So that accelerated the master planning process. Following a full year of community discussion, a master plan to restore the garden was completed and approved by the Park Board in October 2000. Yet it would take another six long years before full-scale restoration work on the site would begin. Much of that time was spent developing the project's cultural landscape report. This critical report detailed every aspect of how the garden site would be restored within the historic preservation guidelines established by the National Park Service. Our interpretation was based on the, the dozens and dozens of photographs that were available to us. We could begin to understand the architectural structures on the site, um, so that was pretty exciting. And then the plants themselves, we could even go so far as to identify individual plant species. Finally, in 2006, after the approval of the Cultural Landscape Report, as well as securing a generous donation from longtime Spokane resident Myrtle Woltson, the long-awaited restoration of the 2.9-acre Moore Turner Heritage Gardens was underway. One of the challenges with um, the restoration process was finding the carriage road because we weren't aware that the soil had been deposited from the 1960s Stephen Street Extension Project. So we actually had to remove about a thousand cubic yards of soil to recover the carriage road intact and also recover the carriage wall, which we also found intact. The pergola site was also an extreme challenge. We fortunately had two intact columns. We had another column that was almost completely intact, but many of the columns had fallen over and many of the columns had actually been destroyed by vandalism. So that was frustrating, but fortunately we were able to find the footings. Some of the other challenges were assessing the stability of the rock walls, the treatment, of some of the staircases. Uh, we were very careful to make sure that the staircases were restored. The last remaining hurdle to be dealt with before the garden's grand opening involved its most important asset. The garden is a combination of native and exotic plants. The native plants tend to be used along the edges and through the walks, but the core of the garden really were exotic plants, meaning not native to the United States. So. We created the initial plant list. We tried to cross-reference those with plants that we knew were uh, currently available. And then they spent many months tracking down things. And we did make one or two substitutions, but not many. They did an excellent job. After living 75 years concealed by dirt and debris, as well as a thick canopy of green supplied by Mother Nature, the newly restored Moore Turner Heritage Gardens was by the second week of August 2007 properly groomed and ready for guests. What had once served as the Moore and Turner family's own private garden and playground had now over seven decades later blossomed into something slightly different. This time it serves as a public garden, steeped in history and free for all to enjoy. I really hope that the uh, public enjoys the garden as much as I do. It's been a very rewarding experience and there's so much to this site, there's so much history to it, and I'm sure that they're going to enjoy it as much as I have. If you have an idea for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSBS TV. 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSBS Public Television.